Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Boards coming back at you with another video in our series specifically diving into how Crokinole tournaments run. Again, this is not the be all and end all. This is just how we're doing it. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about our upcoming tournament on January the 28th. In this video, I'm just going through the flow of the day, what you can expect to experience throughout your day. So the first thing you're going to do, we have registration open from 9 until 9.30 in the morning. So if you can show up during that time, you're going to walk in. The first thing you're going to do is you are going to meet some of the nicest people on earth. Now, I can say that with confidence for two reasons. One, because they are part of the Crokinole community and as you know, Crokinole only attracts good people. The other reason I can say that with confidence is because these are volunteers. These people are taking their time to make sure that you and everyone else there has the best day possible. So you're going to come in and register and pay your $30. Some tournaments have online registration ahead of time, like the World Crokinole Championships. For this one, we chose not to. We just asked people to register. So if you're not registered yet and you know you're coming, please register as soon as possible. And if you are registered and God forbid something in your life comes up that's more important than Crokinole, I know it happens, just please let us know as soon as possible. The more accurate our registration numbers are, the better prepared we're going to be able to be to make sure it's just an awesome day all the way around. So you're going to pay your $30, get a name tag so that throughout the day people know your name, you're meeting lots of new people. And uh, that, $30 or, that $30 also includes your lunch. Now speaking of lunch, at our tournaments we really strive to keep the entry fee as reasonable as possible and just, uh, yeah, just that, just as reasonable as possible. So with that in mind, we don't get super fancy. Please don't show up looking for a three course meal. And also, more importantly, if you have either allergies or food sensitivities or you're just a fussy eater, then I would really encourage you to bring along something that you know that you're going to enjoy. I'll give you an example. There are some tournaments we go to that serve pizza. Lots of people love pizza. Personally, I don't eat it. I just don't enjoy pizza. So I always take along my lunch bag and I've got some meat and some nuts and some salad just in case there isn't a whole bunch of things on that lunch offering that speak to me. In this particular case, we've got the women's group at the Gale Presbyterian Church is making lunch for everyone. We are paying them out of the registration fee to provide lunch for everyone. So now you're signed in, you got your name tag, next thing you're going to do, and obviously this is optional, but I would encourage you to sit down and get some warm-up flicks in. So in this tournament, we have a Q's division, a rec division, and a competitive division. And again, you don't have to do this, it's probably just going to make things easiest if you find your way to your division and sit in those tables, those rows, to get your warm-up games in. So if you're a rec, look for the tables that are labeled rec and start warming up there. Now if you're on your own, there may already be somebody sitting at a table by themselves, I'd encourage you to walk up and say, hey, can we warm up together? And if you do sit at a table by yourself, there's a half decent chance somebody's going to come up and ask you that question. Again, you're going to be meeting more great people. Once you've got a few warm-up flicks in, the next thing that's going to happen is at 9.45, give or take, we are going to do the opening announcements. So we're just going to give you the finer points. By then we're going to know exactly who's there, what the pools are going to look like, answer any questions, and just make sure everybody's ready to get rolling with the day. Once the opening announcements are done, we are going to jump in and start your first round robin. So again, we don't have exact numbers yet, but there's a very good chance that you're going to end up in a pool with eight to say you know 10 11 12 people in your pool you will do a complete round robin in the morning that means you're going to play one game against each other player in your pool in competitive tournaments it's very important that we play a complete round robin I'm going to do a separate video to explain scoring and as well as how the flow of a round robin works but for now just know you're going to get to play every other person in your pool during the morning at which point you'll pass in your scorecard while you're enjoying your lunch those volunteers are going to tally up scores to determine who is in which pools in the afternoon so for the first round robin in the morning the organizers what we do is we make sure that the skill level is dispersed throughout the pools we don't want we don't want one person in a pool with the the 10 strongest players. We really want those pools to be evenly dispersed. In the afternoon, the pool that you will be placed in is determined based on your score in the morning. So the idea is that in the afternoon, you should be ending up in a pool with other people that are around your skill level. It should be really fun competitive matches all afternoon. At the end of the second round robin, then you're going to pass in your scorecard again. 
depending on how many people are in your pool and which division you're in, either the top two people in your pool are going to play off in a final to determine the winner of that pool, or some divisions may even have the top four, so they would do a semi-final and a final. But before we get into that, before we get into those finals matches, while we're tallying up scores, we will be doing the door prizes. There are going to be some door prizes. The main prize that we're focused on is that someone is going to win a crokinole board. Specifically, they're going to win the crokinole board that the finals in the competitive A pool is played on. So you know it's gonna be a great board. Now, in case you missed the other video, the way you get your name in that draw is by being there. There's no, you don't have to pay to go into this draw. Just by attending, your name goes in the draw. The way to get your name in that draw a second time is by making sure that you've got yourself registered by midnight on January the 24th. If you do that and you're there, your name goes into the draw. To be clear, if you register and don't show up, your name's not in the draw. Also to be clear, no one with the last name Tracy is going to have their name in that draw. Sorry boys. <laughs> So that is basically the flow of the day. Once the second round robin is done, if you aren't, uh, if you're not at the top of your pool, if you're not competing in one of those finals matches, obviously you're welcome to leave, but you're absolutely encouraged to stick around and watch some of those finals matches because that's when the really, really fun competitive matches take place. So that's it. Stay tuned. We're going to be coming back at you again more, uh, like I say, with the uh, how to fill out a scorecard, how the round robin works, and answering some other questions that are coming up from these videos. But all in all, that is going to be the flow of your day while you play the greatest game on earth.